Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third part of our HTML and CSS basics tutorial series on CSE Workshop. This is your host, Deca Hardeman. In this video, we will be learning how we can style an HTML document using CSS. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. So if you want to style an HTML document, you need to define CSS attributes. As the name attribute suggests, they define the way that an HTML element should look like. So there are three ways you can add CSS attributes to your HTML elements. So the first way would be to use the style attribute within the opening tag of the given element. Uh, the second way would be to use the style tag. And the third way, uh, which will be the most common way that you're going to be using, is linking an external CSS file. So when we define um, CSS attributes in a CSS file, first we need to define a class or an ID for the element that we wish to style. So think of it as this. Uh, let's say that we have multiple links uh, that we want to look the same way on our web page. We can open a class for those links and uh, instead of uh, defining those CSS rules or attributes for each one of them separately, we can just give them each the same class and then they're going to look the same way. So classes and IDs work mostly the same way except for one key difference and that is that an ID in CSS can only be used once. Meanwhile, a class can be used multiple times or once if you wish to. So in today's video, I want to talk about a total of seven CSS attributes. There are tons of CSS attributes, but these are some of the basic fundamental attributes that you should know about. So without further ado, let's jump straight into experimenting with them, shall we? Okay, so you guys should remember this HTML file from the last video. Uh, as you can see, we have no CSS and the website doesn't look so pretty, does it? So what I did is I went ahead and moved both the HTML file and the image into our project folder. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to open it with Visual Studio Code and then we're going to get our hands dirty. Okay, so before we start writing anything, uh, I recommend you guys go ahead and install uh, this live preview extension for VS Code. You can you can really install any of the ones here. It doesn't really matter. So what it does is that basically let me show you. So what it's going to do is that so when we open this with a live server, it is going to uh, wait for it. Display the web page for us, except when we change something in the web page and then press Control S, saving it, it is going to automatically refresh the page. I find it useful and I really recommend you guys to install it as well. So the first way that we're going to be including styling on our web page is going to be doing it inline using the style attribute. So in the last video, I believe I said that this image was a, was a bit too large. I don't like how big it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to define its height as 200 pixels. And as you can see, it gets smaller. But let's see. Now, the aspect ratio of this image is one by one, though. So let's just, you know, define a width where the aspect ratio will no longer be one by one. Let's make the aspect ratio be let's say one by two. So you don't want to do this when you're defining the height and width of images. Make sure you stay loyal to the original aspect ratio of the images. And uh, if you need to, you can just crop the images into the aspect ratio that you want. It just stretches out the images and it makes them look weird. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is to use the style tag to um, define CSS attributes for given elements within our HTML document. So let me just delete this real quick. Okay, so now the image is back to its normal self. What I want to do is I want to give it a class of, I don't know, let's say user image, let's call it. 
And then here in this style tag, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type, wait, what's going on? No, never mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and type user image. And then inside of these, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to define the rules. So height, 200 pixels. And then actually let's make this image a circle. So border radius. 50%. So when you're working with a square element, you can actually define the border border radius as 50% to um, to make it a circle. But the thing is, what if it wasn't a square? Let's just go ahead and say the width is 400 pixels. As you can see, when it's not a square, it's going to become more of an elliptical shape. But that's not what we want today. So actually, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and make a part about the user who's going to be using the web page. So let's create a div, a divider tag with the class of uh, user info. So inside, I want to have this image. And uh, lastly, let's. Um, Make the background color of it um, gray. Some shade of gray would be nice. So when defining colors in CSS, you can either use the name of the color. Uh, you can use the actually. Let me just show it like this. So VS Code has this feature where you can just pick how it's going to be displayed. You can just uh, have it as RGB, or you can just have it as a hex code, but that's not the color that we want to use today. Um, there's this tool called uh, Flat UI Colors. So let's go ahead and pick a random palette here. A friend of mine recommended this to me. It's pretty nice, I think. So we're just going to copy this color. It looks nice. Control V. So when working with divs, uh, black elements really, uh, what they do is they take up 100% of the width of the parent element, except you'll notice that um, this div is not exactly 100% of the width of its parent element, the body. So it means that there's this white space in between. So what do we do? We go ahead, define this universal uh, actually, let me just, oh, there we go. So we're going to define a universal rule, margin zero, to get rid of that white, white space. And while we're at it, we're, we, may, we might as well get rid of the padding as well. So you're going to understand what these are better in a minute. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. Let's just do it now. So what margin is, is that it's the white space between elements. So um, say for an example, let's say margin top um, let's make it 25 pixels the gap between these two elements the, the paragraph on top and the user info box so um, inside of this user info div though we don't want this to be hugging the sides of the of its parent box so what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and create a gap between uh, the sides of the parent element, in this case the user info div and its inner contents, its children. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a padding of, let's make it 10 pixels. And as you can see, we now have a gap between the, uh, the inner contents, the children elements of the div we have. So next, um, let's go ahead and add an h1 uh, username. Let's make it, um, I don't know, what do we make it? HTML fan underscore 2099. Oh, no, wait, <laughs> my bad. Underscore 2099. Let's go, except, um, actually, I want to let me just make it h2. H1 is a, is a bit too big here. There we go. 
so when I'm working with this though, I want these to be, um, how do I say this? I want this to be here. Oh, so what am I going to do about it though? Well, you see, if I want to um, define CSS rules for elements inside of this user info class, what I can do is I can come here, dot user dash info, um, space, and then write the name of the element that I want to declare rules for, in our case, the h2 element we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it be floating right, because what I want it to, to do is to, well, I want it to float right. So as you can see, it's now on the right, and they're on the same level now, I guess would be the right term. Okay, so um, let's keep going. So the next thing that I want to do um, is, actually, what's the next thing that we were supposed to be doing now? Well, let me just check real quick, check my notes. And uh, okay, so the next thing I want to do is, before I forget, uh, we're going to use the link tag to link an external CSS file. So Visual Studio is, it's really helpful when writing code. It just automatically writes it. We should be able to do this on our own. So rel defines the type of the thing we're linking. And then href is, well, is the address to the file that we're linking. So um, this style.css file does not exist yet. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and um, type style.css. We're going to create a file called style.css. And inside, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these and then what we're going to do is we're just going to paste them here okay so what else can we do to make this place prettier so in this paragraph here you see it's not justified it's aligning right so what we can do about it is we can use the text align attribute to make sure it's justified. We can also have its certain parts be bold using the B tag. So what we want is we want this lorem ipsum part to be bold. And there we go. As you can see, now it's bold. So let's keep going though. Let's make the, I don't know, username italic. Actually, no, you know what, let's just have it underlined for now. The, um, the other info will be italic. So let's go ahead and underline it. There we go. As you can see, it is now underlined. What else can we do? Um, mm, oh, actually, you know what, while we're at it, let's make this um, italic. So let's go ahead and take this and put this between these em tags to make them italic. As you can see, the item one is now italic. So this is it for today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful or educational by any means, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, stay safe and always keep improving. See you guys later in the next video.